Well, that just flat out stunk. The Leafs come out tonight in a highly anticipated game as John Tavares makes his return to Long Island. We're all expecting uh, roses, daisies, and bouquets of flowers for John Tavares, thanking him for his time as a New York Islander. Yeah, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. The nine years John Tavares spent in Long Island, the fact that he won them single-handedly their one playoff series against the Florida Panthers, single-handedly, may I add, again, and put blood, sweat, and tears into that organization for nine seasons, not just the organization, the city, and, and did everything he could for that team. But they gave him nothing to work with, and he's 28 years old, and the Islanders, they didn't really know what type of situation they were going to be in this year. Arguably, they're in a very good situation. They're a very good team. So he decides to leave and come home to Toronto and play for the team he grew up cheering for, who offensively uh, has the prowess of some crazy, crazy players. Matthews, Marner, and he, we, we, we all know the names. And tonight was the night he made his return to Long Island. Like I said earlier, the highly anticipated now, we had a feeling there was going to be a lot of hate. You guys heard about the video that was surfacing uh, from Islander fans that they made, and I'm like, huh, is this really what we're going to be seeing there? Really? You're not going to thank this guy for everything he's done? You're just going to kind of wash it away and say, hey, you left us. Screw you. No. I mean, I, apparently that's what was going to happen. He touches the ice. They boo the snot out of him. Uh, they start, uh, we don't need you. Well, I mean, I guess you don't because you're first in the Metropolitan Division. I'm not going to argue that statement. Um, but, uh, the fact that after warm up, he gets a Jersey thrown at him. Classy. Great, great stuff right there. Great stuff. Um, and then throughout the entire game, every time he touches the puck, every time he touches the ice, he gets booed constantly. Uh, no, that's not good. <laughs> I mean, listen, I understand they're angry that he left. Number one. You're first in the Metro. Why dwell on the past? I mean, yeah, look, he gave you nine years. He did everything he could for your organization. That's all you needed to do. He left for, in his eyes, a better situation. And did you guys get a good situation out of it? I guess so. So then why are you complaining? There's no need for it. I mean, all the NHL is just laughing right now. Because it's, it's embarrassing. It's, it really is. And people think Javaris is embarrassed. No, he's probably just laughing all the way to the bank. Literally. So, uh, the Leafs get spanked tonight? Oh, yeah. Did they deserve to win the game? Oh, no. <laughs> no, they did not. The Islanders come out and are the much, much better team. And uh, Leafs lose 6-1 to the Islanders. Now, huge turning point. In the second period, we'll get it to it in a second here. The Leafs actually score first, though. And they lose. I guess they, uh, I'm okay with not good first periods then, eh? I guess that's going to be a thing. I hope not. Zach Hyman scores his uh, fifth, uh, 14th goal this uh, year, excuse me. Mar uh, Mitch Marner and Ron Hainsey grab assists, and the Leafs have a one nothing lead. Three minutes after that. A three-on-one ensues for the Islanders. That's not good. Anthony Bolivier. Anthony Bolivier scores his 15th goal of the year, tying the game. Uh, that was just under three minutes after the Zach Hyman goal to get the lead. You got to find a way to close out a period strong. The Leafs do not. And the shots are 13-10 Leafs after one period of play. But you know what? Second night of a back-to-back, -back, you have Garrett Sparks in the net. You're in Long Island. And you, know, you know the Islanders players are jacked up because the fans are jacked up. And to be one one after one, I'm not I'm not upset with that at all. You're tied. In fact, you scored first and you're still tied after one against a good team like New York. Okay, I'll take it. Second period rolls around and they get a two on one and Andres Lee scores his 22nd goal of the year. I don't like this goal for Garrett Sparks. However, the Leafs did break down defensively. Clearly, two on one against what usually happens there. Usually a cross cross crease pass and a goal. Or a shot short side. Clearly, Garrett Sparks was thinking he's shooting short side and that's it. Because before the pass is even made, he's already down in the butterfly. And the pass goes across and it's pretty much a wide open net. Sparks has to try and fly over there and make a sporadic save, as he so often does. Try to, at least. And, uh, and Andres Lee scores to give the Islanders a 2-1 lead. I don't, I'm not sure how long after it was. It might have been the 12-minute mark or something uh, in the second period. 
And Mitch Marner enters the zone. Beautiful backdoor feed to Zach Hyman who buries it into the empty net. And we've tied the game at two. Hang on. They go to review. And uh, right, right as they were talking, oh, looks like Trotz might uh, ask for a challenge here. I get up off the couch and I tell my family who's watching with me, this is, I have a weird feeling this is getting called back and this is changing the game. It gets called back. The offside was probably about what? Uh, that much difference? Don't you just love the rule, people? And I'm not just saying it for Leaf fans. Every hockey fan who's watching, don't you just love that offside rule? Or the goalie interference rule? They're just fantastic. Sarcasm at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Don't you just love it? Um, and, and so, goal gets called back. And it's still a 2-1 Islanders lead. They score four unanswered and win 6-1. The Leafs kind of fall apart and die after that goal gets disallowed. Like I said earlier, the Leafs deserve to win it? No, they really didn't. Did the better team win? Oh, yeah. Absolutely did. Garrett Sparks ain't great. He showed us that tonight. As well as the entire Leafs team. News comes out. Travis Dermott. Out at least four. Oh, there was a voice crack there. But you know what? It deserves it. At least four weeks. So you've lost Kadri to the IR to concussion. You've lost Jake Gardner for a week-to-week basis. With a lower body injury, I'm assuming it's his back spasms, but I don't know what the heck it could be. And now you lose Dermot for four weeks at least. The Leafs aren't a great defensive team. We all know this. You just lost two of your left-handed defensemen. So who has to come into the game? Martin Marinson. I have not liked him since the moment he came over here. 17 games this entire year. NHL and AHL combined due to injury. Great. The other guy drawing into the lineup. Justin Hall. How many games has he played this year? Uh, you can count it on one hand. Two. Coming into the game. Marinson and Justin Hall combined this year have played a total of 19 hockey games. Neither of which should be on this defense core. And they're being thrown into the fire against one of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. Yikes. And plus, Garrett Sparks was out there. And look, I'm not, I'm not going to blame this game on Sparks. I understand he gave up six goals and it was not very good. But I'm not going to blame him for it specifically. But there were a few instances where I'm like, what the heck's going on there, Sparks? You already heard me, my thought of, uh, towards the uh, second goal of the game. The third one, which is a shorthanded one, could have tied the game. Short-handed goal given up. They get in a 3-1 game. And on that short-handed goal, I don't know what Sparks was doing. On the first three goals, they're all there's all a common theme for Garrett Sparks. Now, ideally, a 3-on-1 given up and a 2-on-1 and then a somewhat, for the most part, a breakaway. Yeah, those aren't really good chances you want to give up against your backup goaltender. You really don't want to do that. But in the end, he ends up on his face. Prone on the ground. I'm not sure how you're supposed to make a save like that. The third one, he falls down into a star position or a fish. And they slide the puck underneath him. The only spot he was covering in the net. And it finds a way through him. That's just great. But I'm not going to blame him. Because like I said, a three on one, a two on one, and a breakaway. And those are just the three goals. Do we want to get going on the uh, Brock Nelson goal where he streaks down the lane and there's five Leafs just kind of looking at the puck like, uh, what are we going to do with it, fellas? And Brock Nelson gets a centering pass. Meanwhile, Sparks is like on the goal line, so he does, he can't make a save there. The whole team is in shambles tonight. I'm not going to blame one guy. I'm not going to blame the fans. I mean, as much as they were really acting very stupid the entire game, I'm not going to not going to blame them for anything. I'm not, I'm not a salty Leaf fan trying to say, well, they beat us, so I'm angry. No, I'm just, <laughs> it's a bad game. And in, in the end, it's game one of 82, and you got to find a way to move on from it because on Saturday, the Leafs welcome in the Buffalo Sabres to Scotiabank Arena, second time in a week, 
Did the Leafs welcome in the Sabres? Uh, 7 o'clock puck drop there on Saturday night. Carter Hutton, Frederick Anderson. Thank goodness. The expected starters in that game. I miss Curtis, Ma Curtis McElhaney. I said it when it all happened. I'll say it again. He is much better than Sparks. And heck, I don't care what his age is. I don't care if he's 39. I don't give a darn. If he's a, Once he's a free agent at the end of this year, bring him back, please. Please. Because at least he gives you positionally sound goaltending. But again, not going to blame Sparks. It's not his fault. The team sucked. And you look to rebound. Look at what I, like I talk about it in the Raptor videos. I talk about all these other videos. You got to find a way to rebound after a loss. They outplayed us, outmuscled us like a playoff game against the Bruins, it looked like out there. But you got to find a way to bounce back. Right? That's what the great thing about regular season. You lose a game, whatever. Throw it away, move on from it. And for John Tavares, I think he could finally take a deep breath and move on from this stupid game that was today. And now we can focus on the Leafs and the playoffs ahead. All right? And Saturday is that start against the Buffalo Sabres. All right? So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys uh, didn't really enjoy the game today. Smile like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below, guys. What would you think of the game? What would you think of the video? What do you think of the old Islanders fans being what they were there tonight? I want to hear your guys' thoughts towards that. And uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition uh, sometime next week. We're not too sure as of yet. Links are in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes, guys. Twitter is also down below. Follow up. Send me a DM. Do like great stuff. And uh, I will talk to you guys Raptors edition tomorrow night as they welcome in the Portland Trailblazers to Scotiabank Arena. Uh... The, the Portland Trailblazers just yesterday beat the Boston Celtics. Celtics have lost four straight games. Oh, it is beautiful to see, Raptor fans. And for us, you got to take care of business on home court as they have as of late. You know, honestly, on the, in the six-game uh, homestand they're on right now, this the finale of that six-game homestand is tomorrow against Portland. Raptors look to go seven, or six, or, wow, holy smokes, five and one. There you go. I was going to get there eventually. And as for the Leafs, guys, like we said, they look to rebound after tonight's abysmal loss to the Islanders on Saturday night as they welcome in the Buffalo Sabres to Scotiabank Arena. 7 o'clock puck drop. Frederick Anderson, Carter Hutton, the expected starters in that game. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.